One thing I definitely want to feature on my channel is more diversity. So this means looking at movies that have uh, African American directors and actors, Asian actors and directors. I'm just basically going to find all the films that have people of color that I enjoyed as horror movies, of course. And I wanted to go over my top 10 favorite black horror movies. Now, before I get into it, black horror movies are very hard to find. We do have thrillers and other movies like that and romance and so on, but finding it in the horror genre is a little difficult. So I've combed the entire streaming services. I've looked at, you know, what movies are out there and I narrowed it down to my top 10. So here goes. Coming in at number 10 is Horror Noir. Now I actually found this uh, anthology online and it is, it's good. It was good. And for what it was, it was six stories. Um, with all black cast with a black director and um, it was neat it was it was done differently so I enjoyed the story about the mermaid um, there was a yes there was a story about a mermaid I enjoyed that uh, one was a sundown town which was kind of creepy so there were quite a few uh, stories within the anthology that I found pretty neat and the acting although it was a little <laughs> a little iffy in some of the parts there were some good there was some good acting there and I did enjoy the movies altogether. So I definitely say that Horror Noir was one of my favorites. Number nine is Master. Now when I first heard of the title, I was like, I don't know about this one. Because I didn't want to see a movie that had slavery in it. I'm kind of over that. So it was nice to see that this movie um, starring Regina Hall, and we know Regina Hall, love her from the Scary Movie series, and she was good in this one. Um, it was kind of different because the way the filmmaker um, shot the movie or wrote it, it, it looked like it had two main characters. And it was nice to see the two different um, spectrums because one was going to be the headmaster of a school, of a college, and the other one was starting off uh, as a freshman in college. So you got two different um, scopes of these two black women and them starting out in an environment that's predominantly white and trying to get a foothold in, one is trying to get a foothold in her career, her new career as a headmaster, and the other one is trying to get that foothold as a freshman starting off in college. And both of those can be terrifying because you're starting in a new environment. You have, um, you know, people who are looking up to you. You have some criticism, some racism. So there's a lot of things blended into this film. And of course, what I found the, the most exciting about it is because it's horror and they had some really uh, ghostly horror elements that were in the movie. And Master was the director Marima Diallo. Uh, I do believe that's how I pronounce her name. I hope I didn't butcher it, but um, she did well as a director. My only gripe, well, I have a couple of gripes about this movie. It could have been so much better. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the horror elements were introduced properly. It's just that I wanted to see more scares from it. And as you saw the, you know, new headmaster of Regina Hall's character maneuvering through everything and the place that she's in is clearly haunted. And so is the college student. She's seen these things. I wanted to see more of that. I wanted them to explore more of those ghostly figures that they saw. Um, and the way it ended was kind of abrupt. So that's why I ranked it at number nine. It could have been like maybe my number one or two if they just fixed a couple of things in that movie. So definitely check it out when you have time. Coming in at number eight is Thriller by Dallas Jackson. And I remember seeing this movie. Um, it was interesting because it was about these childhood friends that did something. And I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to really go and watch these movies for yourself and see what you think. These childhood friends that did this particular thing and as adults, they're now um, facing this dark secret that all of them share. And I thought it was really neat how they, um, you know, because it, it seemed so real the way they shot it and it seemed so authentic. So I really appreciated it. So with Thriller, it brought up, you know, some nostalgia for me. And also, you know, you as this tight group of friends are looking at this one secret that you've kept all these years. And 
as adults, all of it comes bubbling to the surface. So that was definitely my number eight film. Coming in at number seven is Sweetheart by J.D. Dillard. And J.D. did such a good job as a director in this one because it was scary from beginning to end. Um, the premise of the story is this young girl, um, black girl, she gets shipwrecked on this island and she's trying to survive. And not only is she trying to survive with the basics, like trying to find food, shelter, and water, she is on the island with a monster, a creature, and it's insane. I really like the movie because it's certain scenes that are kind of jarring and scary. And you're thinking as the, the you know, how is this character going to make it out of this? It was insane. So I really like the young lady's resourcefulness. Um, she's also going to be Iris on the Flash. I forgot the actress's name, but she did such a great job um, in this particular film. And I liked the scariness of it. I like the elements and I love seeing monsters in movies. So that's what um, kept me glued to the set, you know, watching this particular film. So good job, JD, on that one. Another movie on my list at number six is Bones, starring the famous Snoop Dogg and Kendra the Vampire Slayer, Bianca Lawson. And I thought that movie was really good. Um, it's about a American black gangster and he, you know, he, lo he loses his life and becomes this murderous spirit. And basically Bianca Lawson's character is trying to create this club with some friends and fix up this old place, but it's haunted by Snoop Dogg's ghost, supposedly urban legend in the hood. And Bones was just, it brought so much to the screen. It was creepy, it was cool. And of course it was a lot of culture ingrained in it too. And that's why I enjoyed it. So that's one of my one of my favorites that I could run to and, and watch again. And Bones director Ernest Dickerson, he did a good job in this because he brought such creepiness to the hood. It, he really did. And with the old buildings, um, the story setting, everything was nicely done. Number five is Black Box by Emmanuel Osai Kufer Jr. Black Box was sci-fi and had horror elements. It starred Felicia Rashad and the talented Mamozi Afi. And I thought he did such a great job in this. Um, basically, it's a gentleman that's losing his memories. Uh, he has some type of issue with his brain where he's not remembering correctly. Felicia Rashad is this brilliant scientist that comes up with this, uh, this programming that can help him regain his memories but there's a diabolical plot running behind it as part of the story and it did give me the creeps uh, with the sci-fi and horror elements intertwined. Number four is Eve's Bayou by Cassie Lemons and I think Cassie did such a good job in directing this film. It was dark, it was set in the bayou, it was creepy. Samuel Jackson is in it, so that's a no-brainer. Definitely a watch for me. Megan Good and Lynn Whitfield. It was an all-star cast and it just gave me these creepy backwater vibes that was, you know, you're trying to put together pieces of the story to figure it out and the ending was quite a doozy. So I really enjoyed Eve's Bayou. Number three is His House by Remy Meeks and it stars Wumi Mosaku. I hope I pronounced her name right. I adore her. She's actually in uh, Loki right now as one of the time, um, the timekeepers. So I enjoy her as an actress as well. And uh, the the movie itself was pretty good. Um, it was scary. It takes place in country in Africa and um, it's basically a wife and husband and they suffered a loss and the walls are talking. Um, there's spirits clearly walking through the place. The place is super haunted. So I enjoyed the ghosts, the zombie looking people, the horror elements. It was basically an all black cast and it was very interesting storyline. Number two is Spell by Mark Tondurai and it stars Omari Hardrick. And I really liked the actor and the director. They did such a great job in this film. So basically Omari's character, um, his father passes away and he has to return home. Now he's from this country, middle of nowhere town and he has to go back home and he does not like the idea of returning to his roots at all something happened to him traumatic in his childhood his wife is like let's go back as a family they decide to bad idea things just pop off and 
um the movie gets crazy it gets really crazy um come to find out his family practices the dark arts dark magic and it's a lot going on and you really don't see a lot of movies with black warlocks and i thought it was just so interesting as a, a you know as a premise for a movie especially starring a all black cast and having those um, roots like hoodoo and things ingrained in there. So I thought that that was pretty neat. And lastly, coming in at number one is Get Out by the famous Jordan Peele. How could I leave Jordan Peele off? And I didn't want to make this list comprised of most of his movies. I really did do my research and dig for these movies and try to give you the best of the best to watch. And in Get Out, of course, it was super successful in the box office and I really enjoyed the story. Um, the actors in there did an amazing job. And the premise is a guy, he's dating this young white girl. Um, she invites him to go to her family's house for the weekend. He just thinks it's a casual, you know, thing where he goes and visits her family. He finds out the family is way more than what meets the eye. <laughs> there are these sickos and it's a lot more behind it. It's not just horror, it's, it's sci-fi wrapped in, it is, um, visceral type of horror it is um, mind control it's a lot of things that come into play with um, Jordan Peele's movie and I really enjoyed it it's it's um, you know overt racism attached to it covert racism it is the way society views other people it was just so nicely done and nicely executed and I know people are complaining like oh this film is too woke or whatever but it was it was tastefully done it wasn't thrown in your face all over the place and you know you're forced to swallow this thing it was just a really beautiful piece of art that also helped to stir up these conversations and bring awareness to certain things so i really enjoyed it and i really hope you liked my um list of you know 10 black movies um i'm gonna try to find some more gems in the rough i think that this uh list is a good one for you to start off with so let me know in the comments section if, if you've seen any of these movies and what you thought or what was your favorite movie from the list? If I did leave one out, let me know which one was your favorite.